In today's Tech Corner, we're going to be talking about Super Duplex 2507. But before you watch this, there's already been two different Tech Corners on two different types of Super Duplex. Now, Rodney, what were them other two videos on? And then let's start talking about 2507. I think we did one around a grade called Feralium 255 and we did another one on 32760. So you take 2507 or 32750 and that's three different grades of 25 chrome uh, just to make life more interesting. So, well, talk me through the history of these three materials because they've got quite a cool backstory. It's certainly got a, a story. Um, you know, 25 chromes are something dear to the heart of Langley Alloys because uh, our business was associated with the commercialization of the very first one. So Feralium 255 is a Langley Alloys product and we patented it back in 1968. Uh, but like any other good product, somebody else sees it and thinks, oh, we could make something similar, better, different. And so along came a product called Zero 100, which was developed by a pump manufacturer in Manchester called Mather and Platt, and that's better known now as 32760. Um, so that was 1968 to 1980. Uh, move along a little bit to 1988, and the Swedish uh, steel company uh, Sandvik, now known as Elima, developed 32750 or 2507, uh, where the 2507 is 25 chrome seven nickel so all three grades are based around 25 percent chrome they've all got similar physical and mechanical properties but they've all got slightly subtle differences and of course everybody thinks that their grade was the best it's always the same isn't it of course now before we get into talking more about 2507 do you stock all different grades yes at Langley Alloys? we made a conscious decision a few years ago to stock all three grades uh, as bar, we stock them as plate in our US warehouse, and we also stock them as pipe as well. Now, stocking them as plates, obviously they're for fixtures, and how is it like to weld? It's a question that I've wanted to ask you for a while, but how do you weld it? Because it's quite a tough material. Carefully is the simple <laughs> answer. Um, this whole family of super duplex grades, 25 chrome grades, uh, for many years have been seen as more challenging to weld. Having said that, there are literally thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of tons of pipeline and other products out there in the market. So it's possible, you just need to know what you're doing. Uh, and the key challenge is not putting too much heat into the product as you're welding it. If you uh, expose the plate, the bar, the items to excessive temperature for a period of time, you start to transform the internal structure in the metal and all of a sudden those amazing uh, mechanical and physical properties that you had, you just destroy them in the, in the strike of a weld. And obviously we don't want people doing that. No, no. Now you've talked about the properties of this material, so what applications is, let's go 2507 specific now. What applications is it used for and what industries are using this type of material? So 2507 along with the other 25 chrome grids, they are good all-rounders. Now all-rounders doesn't mean commodities, doesn't mean the sort of thing you'll pick up around the house or the garage, but it's incredibly widely used. Uh, anywhere where you need that really good combination of strength and corrosion, but at a good competitive price point. So. Typical applications are anywhere involving, uh, for instance, seawater. If you want to make parts or components that are going to be exposed to seawater for extended periods, 2507 and super duplex grades are your default choice. They're your go-to grade, but it will be used in oil and gas. It will be used in structural elements, even in, in some uh, industries. Uh, lots and lots of items will be machined out of it because it's really challenging to find something at the same price that gives you the same bangs for your bucks. Now let's get a little bit technical because obviously you said this can be used in such a variety of industries. Yeah. So talk us through the tensile strength of this, the impact toughness, them bits of, them bits of information you can't rarely find when you're looking for information on material like this. So uh, the strength in, in old money pounds per square inch is 80 or 85 KSI. So that's 
right up there. You know, there are ink and L grades and other high strength grades that will be 20, 30 percent stronger for sure. But at that level, it's already three or four times the strength of something more basic like 316. The toughness is very good as well, except if you're at very high temperatures or very low temperatures. So um, 2507 or super duplex, it's not exactly a, a Goldilocks product, you know, where it, it can't be too hot or too cold. It has to be just right. But once you're above 250 or 300 degrees centigrade, you're going to probably move to a, a nickel based alloy. And if you're less than 50, minus 50 degrees centigrade, you're going to choose a different alloy again. So it's not quite perfect, but it covers you know, a lot of general bases, which is why these grades are so widely used. And obviously there's another problem that some people will face, not everyone, because obviously it's, it's industry specific, but corrosion and pitting when being used. How does this help with them sorts of problems? So um, pitting corrosion, as it's called, is the main uh, failure mechanism for a stainless steel. Uh, ordinarily, they'll 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 retain their their sort of structure, their form, their surface, their integrity. But if they do corrode, it's not that general all over brown corrosion that you'll see on a rusty old car or tin shed. You'll get pitting. So uh, at isolated points in the surface, all of a sudden corrosion will happen. And uh, there are different ways of comparing pitting resistance, but twenty five oh seven. Has a, has a high pitting resistance equivalent number. Uh, we could go into an explanation of it, but maybe that's one of those things that you say, <laughs> give me a call. And that's what's good about you, Rodney. You are always available when somebody needs to find information out like that. Now, specific cases, this material will be chosen over other stainless steels. Why? Good question. So I think at the beginning I said that there were three main 25 chromes and uh, depending on who you will speak to, they'll have their own story and their own preference. There are subtle differences in the composition and therefore there will be subtle differences in their performance. Uh, but because of that, that flexibility in a way, sometimes the, the alloys will be used either or, we've made that decision to just stock all three of them. So we don't have to say, no, no, it has to be this one. No, no, it must be that one. We're a little bit more agnostic and say, well, we stock all three of them. Tell us which one you'd prefer. We can give a recommendation for sure, but not to the point of pushing somebody away. Now, we've sort of kept a bit of a theme to all these tech corners to end on the same question, which is always to try and help the machinist who <laughs> has to make the parts out of this material. So for them, guys or girls who are watching, what is this material like to machine? So, uh, high strength already, so that's going to impart its own loads on the machine and the tool in selection. But these family of super duplex grades, they, they can suffer from a phenomena which uh, various people maybe call movement or relaxing. You have this mixed microstructure, half austenite, half ferrite, the grains in the metal are two different types uh, and that combination gives you really good properties but it also creates some challenges as well so during machining parts can tend to move or distort part way through so I've heard all sorts of strategies around uh, proof machining leave it on a shelf for 24 hours put it on the back of the truck drive it around the car park uh, you know, there are people that, that sell equipment to, to vibrate parts and, and relax them and remove internal stresses. But this family of grades will have that phenomenon from time to time where parts will move slightly during machining. So you've got to have a good strategy for how much you take off the first pass and then how much you take off subsequently to accommodate that slight distortion. Now, don't get me wrong. I've heard of people machining this say roughing it all out and leaving it on a shelf. I've never heard of people sticking it in a van and driving it around a car park. That's a new one for me. Uh, that was that's definitely brilliant. a story that was shared with me. It's brilliant, but that's another one for me. Now, Rodney, a big thank you from all of us at MTD for visiting the MTD Tech Corner today. You're welcome. And if people would like more information on this alloy or other alloys you guys do, how can they get in contact with you? 
the easiest way is find our website. We are stacked out with data sheets and case studies and lots of other information, but also you'll figure out how to contact us, whether it's picking up the phone or through the web chat, because we've got places in the UK and the USA. There's somebody sitting behind a desk 18 plus hours a day that's there to answer your inquiry. Well, Rodney, thank you for your time.